Hey there, and welcome to the NATC Observer Training video. This 20 minute video will cover the basics on how to score an Observe Trials event. If after the video you still have questions, please feel free to contact any NATC representative and they will be happy to answer your questions. This video is split into five chapters that will guide you through the basics of Observe Trials. We will start off by learning about the required and suggested equipment needed to score a trial event. Next, we will go through the basics of a trials section. After that, we will cover the rider basics. Finally, we will go through the rules you are required to know to properly score the event. After all the learning chapters are done, there will be a quick quiz to test your knowledge. Chapter 1. Know your equipment. There are typically three observers per section. The head observer, or observer captain, is typically stationed in the middle of the section and is responsible for scoring the rider in the section. The second observer is the timing and whistle observer, who is typically stationed at the beginning of the section and is responsible for keeping track of the rider's time and blowing the whistle in the event of a failure. The third observer is the scoring observer, who is stationed at the end of the section and is responsible for punching the rider's scorecard. Try to stand so that each of the three observers have overlapping vision of the rider. This is a list of the required observing equipment that is provided to you at the beginning of the event. The list includes a timer, a radio, Channel mode. hello, a whistle, a clock at section 12, a section unique punch, a section repair kit, a notepad and pen, a rule book, and the yellow card. Some optional equipment includes a lunch, a chair, sunblock, bug spray, beverages, and a shading device. Chapter 2. Know your section. The beginning of the section is denoted by the start gates, which will have the day the section is written and the section number denoted. The end gates denote the ending of the scorable section and have the section number denoted as well. The boundary of the section is denoted by the white ribbon with the NATC logo. The NATC uses gate style markers to denote which obstacles a particular class must ride to be scored. The markers always come in pairs and the two cards create a plane in between them. The clubbing class follows the green arrows, the support class follows the white arrows, the expert support class follows the blue arrows, the expert class follows the red arrows, and the pro class follows the black arrows. A recent addition to the markings of a section are these do not enter markers that denote that a class marker is on the back side of the obstacle. This allows for riders to be able to tell whether or not there is a marker on the back side of the obstacle that they must avoid. Here is an example of an expert and pro class gates doubled up for the same obstacle. If at any point during the event a section becomes unrideable due to unforeseen circumstances, please notify the sporting steward. The last helpful tip in this section is that it is always a good idea for the observer to walk the section as if you were the rider in each class to get a good idea of where the riders will be going. Chapter 3. Know Your Rider Each rider will have a personalized nameplate denoting their state of origin, riding class, name, and sponsors. Pros are allowed to substitute the class designation for their previous year's finishing number. For information regarding what notation must be present on the nameplate, please visit the NATC website. The number plate's background color will also match the rider's class gate color. Each rider will also have their full name printed on the back of their jersey for ease of identification. The minders must be wearing the rider's bib and ask for permission to enter the section to mine for their rider. Last but not least, Please always ensure that every rider entering your section is wearing a tethered kill switch. Chapter 4. Know the Rules 
Riders are allowed to walk into the section at any point during the event to scope out their line. This is true unless another rider is going to attempt the section, in which case the riders walking the section must evacuate. Minders are not allowed in the section until it is the rider's turn to ride. Riders are not allowed to move any obstacle in the section by use of hands or feet. Riders are, however, allowed to pat down or compress the ground on which they intend to ride. Please use common judgment making this call. If there are obvious unintended obstacles such as leaves or branches in the section, assist the rider in removing this unintended obstacle. Scoring begins when the rider's front axle passes through the start gate plane and ends when the front axle passes through the end gate plane. The observer must raise the number of points the rider has earned using their fingers. This allows the rider and other observers to know how many points have been counted. The observer shall show a raised, bald fist and announce rider in a loud voice to authorize a rider to start riding the section. The observer will use the stopwatch and whistle to administer the rider's 90 second time limit to ride the section. The observer will blow the whistle and start the clock when the front axle passes through the start gates. Rider! The observer will blow the whistle at a final time of 90 seconds if the rider has not exited the section or at any time the rider records a failure of 5 points. An example of the NATC scorecard is shown here. Starting at the top left, the card denotes the rider number, the rider name, rider class, end time, loop number, date, bike, and state. After the rider has completed the section, use the given punch to mark the score the rider has earned. If a mistake is made, punch all other scores except for the score the rider has earned. If you are scoring the final section of the day, on the third loop, all riders' finish times must be recorded. If the rider is in the pro class, the first loop finish time must also be recorded. Now, let's talk about points. The most typical method for points to be incurred is through footing or dabbing, which is any contact providing support between any part of the rider's body or motorcycle with the ground or other obstacle. Points can be incurred one at a time, two at a time, or even three at a time, as demonstrated in the following clips. It is important to note that the maximum amount of faults that can be incurred in any given section is three. Riders are allowed to paddle their way through a section and still earn a score of three points. During a dab, the rider is allowed to rotate his foot while still incurring only one point. The dragging of the foot against the ground counts as three points. Riders are allowed to dab with one foot and shift with the other leg during a dab while still incurring one point. Riders are allowed to dab one foot on the same side of the bike as the other leg and still only incur one point. Riders are allowed to dab outside of the boundary ribbon without marking a failure. Any contact between the motorcycle and obstacle counts as a point. The only exceptions are the tires, foot pegs, and skid plate. This same maneuver can also incur two points. The following three scenes show maneuvers which are legal and do not incur any points. Intentional contact between the rider and obstacle also counts as a point. Any combination of the aforementioned penalties 
will also incur points. In this case, a score of 3 would be earned. Rushing past an obstacle and not using it to his or her advantage does not count as a point. Counting toe dab penalties always rides the fine line. Use your best judgment, but if a clear advantage is gained by using the rider's toes or heel, then a point is earned. In this scene, no advantage is gained. In the second scene, a clear advantage is gained, and a point must be earned. Now let's discuss failures, which result in a score of 5 points. The rider earns a score of 5 points if the engine stops while footing or while any other part of the motorcycle except for the tires is used for support without forward motion. In this scene, the rider earns a score of 0 points. In this scene, the rider earns a score of 5 points because the skid play was used for support while the engine was off. The rider also earns a score of 5 points in this scenario because the handlebar was used for support while the engine was off. The motorcycle must be moving forward while footing with the dead engine to avoid a 5 point score. Moving backwards with or without footing at any point in the section is considered a score of 5 points. Riders are allowed to ride over the boundary ribbon as long as daylight cannot be seen in between the tire and the ribbon. Breaking the ribbon results in a 5. Riders are also allowed to float the tire over the ribbon as long as when the tire lands it is inside the boundaries. Riders are allowed to ride directly over a marker as long as it is not displaced. Not only displacing a marker, but riding through a gate of a class other than the designated rider's class results in a 5. If the rider has made no direct contact with the marker and the marker is displaced, this counts as a score of 0 points. In the event of a marker being displaced, it is the observer's job to fix the marker. If the rider dismounts from the motorcycle and has both feet on the ground on the same side of the motorcycle, or if both of the rider's legs are behind the motorcycle's rear tire, this counts as a score of 5. At no point during the section may a rider remove their hand from the handlebar unless they are balancing with both feet on the pegs. The rider and the minder are not allowed to make changes to the condition of a section while riding the section. The minder may not assist the rider in any way during the 90 second time movement without incurring a score of 5 points. Penalty of 5 points is administered to any rider that begins a section attempt without the observer's acknowledgement. A score of 5 points is earned if the handlebar is used for support and the motorcycle is less than 45 degrees from vertical. A score of 5 points is earned if the motorcycle does a complete loop in a section, crossing both its own tracks with both wheels. Overlapping tracks with either the front or the rear tire is acceptable for zero points. 
going backwards through any pair of gates, regardless of which class, is considered a score of 5 points. Imagine a plane being drawn across where the two gates are placed. If that plane is broken by any part of the motorcycle, that is considered a score of 5 points. The front wheel must precede the back wheel when passing through gates. A rider may only pass through any gate one time per section attempt. Also, failure to go through each gate in the section for the designated class is also a score of 5 points. All riders must wear a wrist tether type motor killing device. A rider waiting in line to enter a section must not leave the rider's motorcycle. If the rider does, the rider must go to the end of the line. Refusal to comply may be considered unsportsmanlike conduct. person may protest another rider's score. Only the rider can protest the rider's own penalty. Any extreme expression of anger or vulgarity warrants the use of a yellow card and a 10 or 25 point penalty depending on severity. In the event that a person or object disrupts the intended line of a rider, that rider is entitled to a re-ride if they wish. The number of points they earned up to the point of the obstruction are kept, and only after the point of obstruction is scored, and the two are summed. Now that all the learning chapters are complete, we are going to take a little quiz. Watch the following clips and decide for yourself what the rider has earned. For the first scenario, Josh will be riding the expert line. Pay attention to only the amount of dabs he has taken. In this particular section, the rider earned a score of one point. Did you come up with the same answer I did? In the second scenario, Brian will be riding the pro line. That was a tough one. I think he deserved two points. First, for dabbing at the top of the rock, and second, for a toe dab on the exit rock. In these kinds of scenarios, it may be helpful to rely on the other observers in the section 
to give a different perspective to better allow yourself to make an accurate call. In scenario three, Josh will be riding the expert sportsman line. In that scenario, the rider clearly deserved three points. In scenario four, Josh will again be riding the expert sportsman line. In this scenario, the rider earned two points, one for dabbing with the handlebar and the second point for a foot dab. In scenario five, Brian will be riding the support line. In this scenario, the rider earned one point. In scenario six, Vonda will be riding the club in line. In this scenario, the rider earned a clean ride. For the final scenario, Josh will be riding the expert sportsman line again. If you didn't catch it, go back and look again. While trying an alternative line to clean the expert sportsman line, Josh went backwards through a clubman gate. If you had a hard time with the quiz scenarios, it might be helpful to rewatch the video. If you aced all the questions, then you are now ready to observe a national trials event. That concludes the NATC Observer training video. Thanks for watching. We hope to see you out on the loop.